Vaginal discharge, we all have it, but how do you know if it's normal? How do you know if it needs to get checked out? Stay tuned to find out what you need to know about cleaning down below. Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Renita White, a board certified OBGYN, women's health expert, and mother to two boys, ages five and two. Thanks for coming to my channel. This is where we talk all about women's health, empowering you to advocate for your life and your health. So let's get into it. Vaginal discharge. What is it and how do you know if it's normal? Well, first of all, everybody's got it. It is how the vagina cleans itself. Yes, you heard that. The vagina knows how to clean itself. So first, it's important to understand the anatomy down there. What exactly is what? Now, there's the vagina and then there's the vulva, two separate things. The vagina is that muscular tube that goes from the outside of your body to where the inside is, where cervix and uterus is. Think where you place a tampon, where you have sex. But the vulva is the outside of the genitals, so what you can see with your eye. So we're talking the labia, labia minora and majora, the pubic mons, which is that top fatty pad of tissue where hair is, and then your groin area there. So it's important to know this difference between the two because it's gonna be important to know how to clean those areas. Now let's talk about vaginal discharge. Vaginal discharge is basically the secretions that your vagina makes in order to clean itself. So it's a mix of secretions from different glands, dirt and old cells, and also can be used for secretions when it comes to lubrication or intercourse. So it's used to help clear things out of the vagina. It's used to help with transportation. So whether you're transporting sperm up to where the uterus is or transporting old cells and dirt out of the vagina, and it helps with lubrication. So make sure that you're not too dry down there and to make you comfortable. So what does it look like? How do you know if it's normal? Well, discharge is going to be there. It's normal to have something coming out from below. Think of it like sweating. Normal is usually whitish, clearish look to it, maybe even a slight yellow. It's usually described as about one or two teaspoons, but who's measuring? But enough that it may get on your underwear or you see it when you wipe. And there's usually no foul odor, but it can have a smell, something that's just normal to you. Your discharge can change depending on where you are in your cycle as well. So let's say you just finished your period, probably gonna be the lightest amount of discharge that you have, barely much of anything, just a little bit when you wipe, clearish white. Right around ovulation, you'll notice that it's more like an egg white consistency, really sticky and thin, you can stretch it if you were to touch it, and really mucusy. Then two weeks before your period, it's the most you're probably gonna have, which is more of a creamy, lotion-y consistency. Again, that whitish, maybe light yellow consistency. So that's usually what you'll see around your cycle, right before your cycle. Now, how do you know if it's abnormal? Well, we think about amount. How much discharge you have, if it's normal than what you're used to, that could be a sign that something's going on. What about the color? So we said white or light yellowish look to it, but anything that's more of a frank yellow, green, or even an abnormal spotting could be the sign of something going on. Itching and irritation is never normal. So if you're noticing an itch down below that's lasting for more than just a few seconds here or there, but it's kind of lingering on, or any irritation, that in itself can mean that something's going on down below too. And finally, odor. Like I said, it's normal to have a little bit of a smell, like we all have smells to our own body, but you'll notice that something's different for you. It may be foul smelling and really nasty kind of smell to it, or something that's just not something that you are used to. So that's a sign that you may wanna get things checked out because you may have an infection or vaginitis, which is basically an overgrowth of bacteria or yeast. So that's when you wanna get things checked out. So what affects our discharge? Well, there can be a few things. For one, soaps and the kind of products that we use down below. So stay tuned and we'll get into that here next. 
food and diet has been shown to possibly contribute to what's going on down below because we all have bacteria in different parts of our body, in the gut, in the vagina, but as we introduce different kinds of foods to our system, that may change the microbiome, which is the term for the kind of bacteria that live below. Medications can also play a role too. So if you take an antibiotic to get rid of a bad bacteria that's causing an infection, it may get rid of some of the good bacteria leading to an overgrowth of the infection in the vagina, then leading to some of those abnormal symptoms. So keep an eye on some of the things that you eat. If you take an antibiotic, keep an eye on if you start to get any abnormal signs of discharge or irritation. And when in doubt, talk to your doctor about some options. Now let's get into it. How do we clean down below? Well, well, just keep it simple. Really, all you need is water, your fingertips, or a washcloth, and just a small amount of cleanser. It could be the soap that comes from the rest of your body and kind of trickles down below, or you can use a cleanser over the counter if you'd like, but really you don't need that and you don't need much. When cleaning down below, think cleaning the vulva, because like I said, the vagina takes care of herself. So with that water and soap, a small amount, apply it to where the hair is or where the hair would grow from. So the labia majora, which are the outer lips, or the groin, or the very top of the, of the vulva, which is called the pubic mons. This is where you would get rid of any old skin, sweat, debris, any kind of dirt from exercise, your day-to-day -day activities. But anything on the inside of the labia minora, you don't need to do anything with. So what kind of cleansers should you use? Well, keep it boring. We're talking no artificial or added scents, no added chemicals, really the most mild, unfragranced thing that you can find. Like I said, it could be from the rest of your body, whatever you clean the rest of your body with, let it kind of run down into the vulvar area and use that bit there. But you don't need anything special to be right where the vagina is because you don't wanna get an infection or any irritation. So. I hope this was helpful for you to learn about how to clean down below, what's normal discharge and what's not. Tell me if you're interested in these kind of videos and if so, I'm happy to do them again. And when in doubt, don't be afraid to talk to your doctor about how to take care of you and your health because you know your body best.